My name is Tony Sparrow. I'll be your moderator tonight, along with Ed and Lorraine Warren. Last show, we spoke of the Amityville Horror in our part one series. We delved more or less, Ed, into the history of Amityville mm -hmm. to the background of the house. Mm -hmm. But tonight, I think what we'd like to do is speak more of the phenomena that, that actually occurred, occurred in mm -hmm. the home. So can we begin, Ed, with some of the phenomena that did actually occur at 112 Ocean Avenue? Okay, uh, in the beginning, uh, George and Kathy would feel the psychic cold throughout all the rooms. No matter how many logs they'd throw on a fire, it was icy cold. That's because it's a psychic cold, and the cold is being drawn uh, the heat from the bodies of the people in that house is being drawn and that heat is going to be used as an energy fuel source for the spirits in that house. So they feel the psychic cold, they would hear magic whispering voices throughout the hallways. Uh, at night uh, they would see ghost lights over their beds in the rooms. There was a time when George and Kathy found themselves about two foot from the ceiling George looked over at Kathy and said, do you believe this? Do you believe it? And of course, then they went and lowered themselves down into the bed again. But there would be the footsteps. Uh, there would be the um, slime that they would find on the staircase. Now, these are called apports. Mm -hmm. These materialize or dematerialize in such wanted houses. For instance, uh, in many homes that we go into, we will find that uh, you might see blood, as they did, coming down the wall. But if you went over there and touched that wall, there'd be no blood. This is a telepathic projection to the viewer, and it bypasses the physical eye, goes into the mind's eye, and they see it as a medium would see it. Uh, there was the marching uh, band, as they described it, around 3.15 in the morning when the murders had taken place. A lot of things would happen at around 3 o'clock. We call this the devil's hour mm -hmm. because it's an insult to the Trinity, anything that comes in threes. Uh, they would hear this marching band. George would jump out of bed. He'd go running down the stairs. As soon as he'd get down to the foyer, the music would stop. But he'd look into the living room, that huge living room, mm -hmm. which you'll see a picture of, and the rugs were actually rolled up and the furniture was pushed over to the sides of the walls as though somebody were actually marching there. Uh, there were so much different types of phenomena that occurred to us and the people that went in there. It was incredible. I told you about the experience last week of where I felt as I was being smothered. Mm -hmm. uh, going into that home again, uh, Lorraine felt many things. She, as a clairvoyant, would be more sensitive. Mary Pascarella, who was uh, the director of the Psychic Research Institute in Hamden, Connecticut, never went into a haunted house after that. She gave up the work because right? she was so badly affected by it. Mm -hmm. The cameraman uh, that went in there with Channel 5 news team, uh, had heart palpitations. These guys, they were in battles in World War II. Of course, it bothered them, but never as much as going into that house there. Well, it was the physical effects on their body, Tony, mm -hmm. that was bothering them. And then one of the scientists that had come up uh, from Duke University, he became so terrified in this home, and the chair that he was sitting on actually went right backwards with him in it. They had a real hard time just stabilizing him emotionally in that home. Mm -hmm. But it seemed like, and it's true to the fact that people are affected on their weakest, most vulnerable levels. And I think many times people of science go into a home like this not really expecting to be affected personally, mm -hmm. just to be there and be witness to it. Mm -hmm. But they have nothing to fall back on. They have no faith, Tony. They can't call on any inner strength other than their own personal knowledge. Right. And in a way, that, as far as I'm concerned, they can't possibly be too objective that you way. You know, Father Pecoraro told me about an experience he had when he left the house. Mm -hmm. He went back to his rectory. He was up in his room. Suddenly the room became icy cold. Ghost lights were shooting all over the place, and a deep, harsh, growling voice occurred in that room. He's seen what he described as a lizard-like creature. Now, as a demonologist, I have seen diabolical. In fact, at one time, I had seen 43 of them. I knew exactly what he was talking about. 
It's something that you can't describe to anybody. It's something that's from another world. Mm -hmm. And as he described that, uh, you could see the terror in this man's face. He wasn't used to these types of things. And the same thing happened to him again in a hotel room in Florida with a rabbi. Mm -hmm. The both of them experienced this. And when this lizard-like creature appeared in that room to these two men, and it finally faded, the glass in the windows turned red. Now, speaking of the clergy, Lorraine, you had mentioned before, and I think we're going to see a slide of him, mm -hmm. you have mentioned Padre Pio from Italy, mm -hmm. who I believe was a, a Franciscan Yes, uh, monk. he was. He was a Franciscan um, monk. I think we're going to have a shot of him coming up. Now, if we could get that slide. Stigmata. I uh, guess here it is right yes. here. Yes. Can you explain, Ed, what He's, we're looking at here? And Lorraine, yes. either one of you. He, is, he suffered the wounds of Christ, Tony, for 50 years of his life, mm -hmm. which meant that he bled just as Christ bled on the cross. So did he bleed from his feet also? Yes, just... he did. Yes. Okay. Now, the incredible thing was that 10 minutes after this man died, 10 yeah. minutes, all of these wounds disappeared. They all were healed, really? Tony. Yes. There, there were the critics who would say, well, the man did this to himself. After he was dead, he couldn't do anything to himself. Mm -hmm. And these wounds simply disappeared. Okay, here's a close-up. Okay, now. Here's look, a close up of Padre look Pio. at this close up. Look at this profile. If we could go back uh, a little further and see the, the uh, hood. If we could.